Hey ladies, what's up? My name is Sydney Carroll and I'm super excited about being here with you guys. This is super dope. I'm so glad you guys have decided to continue on um, with the devotional series. We're actually going to do something a little bit different this week. We are going to follow through with a video um, series and I think this is going to be pretty cool and interesting. Um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And when this is over, make sure that you like the page. Today we are talking about forgiveness. And we kind of been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. Just because, you know what, let's just be real. The only way that you can be everything that God called you to be is to start in a place of healing. And so, um, I know I talked about this tree once before. Let me make sure I got my notes up. And so, um, this tree, and the tree actually comes from Mark 11. If you ever want to read that on your own, um, I encourage you to do so. Pull it up here for you guys. <clears throat> okay, and so... Living forgiven is one of the best benefits of being saved, y'all, just to be completely honest, um, because it, it becomes a, a place of strife for us if we're not. And what I mean by that is God can only forgive us as much as we have forgiven others. And what I don't want to see happen for me um, is for me to be held back from the riches and goodness of God um, just because I couldn't get myself together and or get myself to a place where I, I just moved on. And honestly, um, today, I'm going to, hopefully I can break this down. I know last week we talked about it being an independent thing, a personal thing that you have to forgive yourself for falling victim to your past experiences. But now I want us to look at um, how Jesus sees us when we decide to make forgiveness our personal business. And so back to that fig tree. So just picture this, Jesus is walking through the city. He is Holy Week. Uh, week before, he had just come into town riding on a donkey. Everybody was fanning him, putting the palms down, you know, Palm Sunday or whatever. And what we learn, you know, is that Jesus is walking past his tree. And it's not even the tree. Oh, let me turn that music down. Yeah. So jesus is walking past this tree and what we learn is that the tree is actually it's not fig season yet it's pre-fig pre-fig season and so it was interesting to me when i was first looking at it was the fact that it said that jesus looked at the tree and cursed the tree because it wasn't producing figs but how would he know if it was producing figs if it wasn't fig season if it was pre-season to figs and i know some of y'all super spiritual and y'all like because he's jesus and he know everything uh yes he does but the thing is is that the fig tree produces a pre-fig fruit and it's actually this little, it's not as sweet as figs, but it's actually like this little green, little pod seed type thing. And so if the tree is not producing that in advance, then you know um, that the season that's coming is not going to produce a harvest. And so that's why he looked at it. And then Jesus cursed it. And he uprooted, he uprooted the tree with a curse because he despised the fact that the tree looked promising, but it was never going to produce fruit. And so I know you're like, Sydney, make it quick. Let's get to our points. Help me understand what you're trying to say. My point is this, is that God has given us all a set of gifts to help us fulfill our purpose, to help us move forward, to help us um, promote the, uh, the advancement of the kingdom. And we can have it. You've got people who can sing the house down but they're never going to produce fruit in the kingdom of God because they're not in a place. They're not healthy enough to do it. Number one. And then number two, they're just not in alignment with that. So you're dealing with unforgiveness, which is a form of disobedience and then flat out disobedience, flat out rebellion. And so what's going to happen here in a little bit is that Jesus is going to, he's going to cast you away. He's going to, he's going to say, get away from me. He's going to call you a wicked servant. Because you're not focused on producing those things that he has called you to produce. If he's called you to be an apple tree and you're not producing apples, what good are you to him?
when we talk about moving forward and being the type of tree that God has called for us to be, that Jesus is expecting us to be when he walks through his orchard, when he walks through his vineyard, when he walks through his garden, if we're not that thing, it's typically because we haven't started to dig up the things that are inside of us that are that are keeping us away from God. Things like bitterness, self-hate, envy, jealousy, fear, discontentment, all those things, we've allowed them to take root. And what has happened is we've allowed them to create, to, to form that fruit in us and not the fruit of gentleness, grace, meekness, um, compassion, um, anger when it's appropriate. We've not allowed um, for the things that God has created in us to have fruit because we replaced his fruit with all these other things. I want you to ask yourself, what are you producing on your tree right now? Because people look at you, people look at me, people look at, at who we are and they make, they draw conclusions um, about the type of fruit that we have in our life. And you really got to be honest with yourself too and ask yourself, why have you allowed those things to root? Why have you allowed those things to, um, to take over? That was some think time, trying to give you an opportunity to have some think time. <laughs> Why have you allowed those things to do that? And what do you need to do now to get it up, to dig it out? Because I don't want you, we got to understand that living in sin, disobedience creates a, a, a barrier between us and God. Um, and there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about how sin is like a stinky stench in the nostrils of God. And so when we, when he's given us specific instructions, specific um, roles to play, and we choose not to willingly, like deliberately, we just like, nope, I'm not going to do that. We are, we are making a decision to be enemies with God. We are deciding to side with our flesh, or we're deciding to side with our, um, with the enemy, with the adversary. And then at that point, again, we're going to go back to my point of God is going to send you away because you, that your father then is the prince of Persia. It's the prince of the air. So you got to be real clear about who you want to serve in this season and what it is that you have that you're looking for. And so Jesus, you know, is, is expected for to see this fruit come. And we, and we have glimpses of it. There are times where we can see ourselves doing things that we never thought we, we could do before. Um, or we have experiences that expose something new inside of us, that expose something innovative inside of us. And that's not by mistake. That's just a baby hint at what you could do. Some of you guys are still trying to figure out what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? And I keep telling you, it's the most simplest of answers. It is what you're already doing. It's just magnified. And so for some of you guys, that might be an administrative task. Some of y'all need to do a spiritual gifts test. That's what you need to do. It's a spiritual, spiritual gifts test and see where your gifting is. And then see what kind of things do I do already in my life that expound upon or express or blow up these skills that I already have. That's not rocket science, y'all. And the, and the thing is, once you figure out where your strengths are, you, you ask God to grow the ministry inside of you. You go to God and you say, Lord, show me what it is that you want me to do. And some of y'all, some of y'all are going to get frustrated here in a little bit because there are so many things that you're holding on to. There's so many reservations that you're holding on to that you're not going to have room to receive what God wants to do. And so he's going to look at you and say, you look promising but you won't produce. So as I'm wrapping up, cause I'm coming down to my last five minutes of the session, you can't really lend yourself to level to the level of ministry and effectiveness that God wants to do inside of you because the after effects of disobedience, the after effects of unforgiveness will hinder you. Don't allow your inability to trust yourself after a disappointment you to live don't, don't, don't let that make you live cursed make a decision today be free ask yourself is it is it forgiveness of myself that i'm struggling with 
or is it forgiveness of that person that I'm struggling with? Why am I, why am I so angry? Why am I so upset? Why am I so disappointed? And I want you to go to God and I want you to ask God um, to show you how to move forward. And just go to God and just say, Lord, I just need a new heart all together. Throw the whole heart away. And God, just begin to renew me. Just begin to, to help me see things the way that you see it. And then I want you to finally, because y'all know I love a good list. I want you to make a list of the people um, or, or the things or the times that are holding you back. If it's, I, I can't forgive this person. I want you to write down why you can't forgive them. And then I want you to ask yourself this thing right here. When you get to heaven and God asks you for a recount of everything that you've done, and when he asks you, why is it that you have carried this from that point to here? I want you to write down what your response is going to be. Okay? And I want you to see, I want, I want to know, is it, was it worth it? Was carrying that hurt worth it? Was carrying that betrayal worth it? Was carrying that shame worth it? Forgive yourself, forgive others. I struggle with that God. I'm not going to do it at all. And you get there and he asks you for an account. Was it worth it? So that's all I have for you today, ladies. I hope um, that you are working diligently to get healed, to get free. I'm super excited though, because this is the last of that devotional. And we're going to talk about moving forward in our purposes being blessed, being full, and making room for God. So I'm super excited. We probably will not be doing a reading devotional. It'll probably all be video. Um, but I hope that y'all get free. I want to do a special shout out to my bishop and first lady. It is Tuesday, so y'all already know what's up. Y'all know we're going to have some Bible study popping off tonight. Join us on Facebook. And I, I pray that this word has found everyone well, Lord God, that your presence be felt in our hearts. Father, like never before, we experience you, Lord, that you give us supernatural wisdom, supernatural increase, and most of all, God, that you expand your courage inside of us. Help us to be the daughters that you called us to be. Help us to be courageous and free, Father. Bless us this day, Lord. And we ask for healing and covering, Lord, for wisdom of our leadership, wisdom of our, of our governor, of our president, Lord God, healing and covering over our families. Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, I just ask that you cover my leaders. God, give them supernatural wisdom, supernatural anchor, supernatural discernment. Father, expand their ministry like never before. Bless every woman on this, on this podcast, on this YouTube channel, Lord. Blow on the ministry inside of them. Expand it, Lord. Give them clarity. Give them strength. In your precious name, we pray. Amen.